What's going on guys? Yonkers here, you're here to give you guys a quick breakdown on what the sandbox server for 1.1, sorry, 1.0 and 1.1 actually means. But first, if you guys don't know what the sandbox server is, excuse me, let me explain to you what the point of this whole thing is. Now, some people think that the sandbox server is supposed to be something of a uh, normal test server. It's not. If this, isn't, this isn't something that shows up at the end of uh, a patch period and it shows you basically the tanks or the maps or the physics or anything that's changing the game. This server is constantly ongoing and apparently receives an update every Thursday uh, of on that uh, on that week. So what you get uh, overall is a constant test server that changes every week based on what Wargaming needs to find out about. You know, uh, be it whether or not they want to know if a patent should have uh, the DPM of like 5,000, or whether or not a mouse would do better if it had one second aim time. These are really quick things, and it does not mean that anything you see on the internet, on forum posts, on blogs, in videos, it doesn't mean this stuff is going to actually be in the game anytime soon or ever if that and like in that point so um now that we got that kind of out of the way let's talk about what it means to be in the test server well you get five million credits you get 500 gold you can't buy any premium rounds unless you use the 500 gold that you have um <clears throat> All your credits are doubled, so you actually can make a little money a little easier, regardless of how bad or how well you actually do in a match. Um, with that being said, you can only play as tier 10 tanks, be it medium, TDs, heavies, artillery, you name it, it's all the same. All the tier 10s in the game, except for the RU251, 54 lightweight, and T49. Those are uh, the actual current light tanks in the game as there, there are no actual tier 10 light tanks. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, wow. You guys can see up here basically the, the biggest change um, to this whole thing and why I think it became as important as it actually is, is the impending artillery balance uh, or rebalance um, for like the third time. <laughs> um, Artie is inherently broken, and we all understand that it's broken. It was supposed to stop camping. All it did was actually create camping because no one wanted to ever be blown away. So, I mean, I think the changes they've made are good, and we'll get that in just a moment. So, um, in this overall we balance, um, reading, reading from notes here, we have Artie, the major thing, obviously. Then, Wargaming's new attempt here is to give... A new role to every single tank in the game so instead of us saying you know well the conqueror is a support tank it's not really a heavy tank it's more of a support tank. uh support tank it's supposed to be behind uh the tanks like the st1 or the e75s it can't really tank things very well because of the low hull armor it has well um what they've kind of changed everything into is they have these different brackets so you've got cavalry, you've got assault you have heavy tanks fire support Ambush, scouts, and artillery. Um, this kind of means, like, for what it seems like, cavalry would mostly be medium tanks. Uh, assaults would be anything along the lines of IS-7s, E-5s, you know, things that are actually really good at moving, basically. Things, heavy tanks that are quick. Uh, heavy, heavy tanks are actual heavy tanks, that, you know, like the super heavies. Mouse, E-100, Type 5. Um, the big, slow, clumsy, clunky, but extremely well-armored and extremely well-gunned. Uh, tanks in general. Fire support of your 50Bs, um, E57 heavy, um, the, you know, the, like the heavy tanks that aren't really meant to be in the fight, like the Conqueror, for example, that's what fire support would probably be. Uh, excuse me, ambush, ambush tanks, which are basically TDs. I mean, I imagine that's the majority of them. They're all TDs. Uh, scouts are obviously light tanks, which I, I still think that calling light tank scout is the wrong idea, but that's that's for another video. Uh, artillery, uh, we obviously know what that is, is supposed to be now a true, true, true support vehicle, and that is it, basically. But 
we'll jump into that again later in the later in this video and in in following videos. Um, another major thing that they changed uh, in the first couple iterations of the sandbox server is shell distribution. Now you guys know that in eight point six. Basically, every tank in the game became more accurate. That meant 122s were yellow sniping from 600 meters uh, on the move, and Leo 1s and everything else that were basically already inherently very accurate became laser accurate. And Wargaming decided that that wasn't a good idea, and in 9.6, they changed it again. Uh, for the Sandbox server, it has been changed yet again. So now um, it was kind of... Before, it was the majority of shots would land north towards the middle, which I appreciated because RNG is 9.6, uh, basically kind of evened it out a little more. In 9.15, uh, or in the sandbox server itself right now, this current iteration, they've kind of widened it back out again, but the majority of shots will still go in the middle. I mean, I, I guess this was needed. I don't, <laughs> it didn't bother me. I kind of like having my shots go where they actually are supposed to go, but that's... You know, whatever. Uh, another big change that's going down in this one is, are the ammo changes. And with the ammo changes, what this basically means is I'm going to read this as well because I make sure I get it right. Uh, AP loses 30% of pin at 500 meters. Now, I, this the, these these changes sound bad. Before I get into this really quick, changes sound really bad. But how many times are you actually firing at tanks that are over 500 meters? It's pretty rare, but for the support vehicles that will be in this game, 50Bs, 57 heavies, things like that, that aren't necessarily in someone's face, and you're sniping, you know, all your really accurate tanks that are inherently going to be sniping because the people do with them, um, you're going to be in a bad way if you're firing AP or APCR, because uh, APCR happens to lose 40% of its penetration at 500 meters. What that basically means, if you have, you know, 300 pin, uh, you're looking at like three, oh, sorry, 170 ish by the time it really, you know, gets to you, like to the actual target. I mean, that's not very good. Um, but you know, it, it, it puts armor back into the game again. So, it heat rounds get no changes before we continue on. Heat rounds get no changes whatsoever. So, this kind of changes things up about the balance, though. Again, we'll get into that a little bit. Um, shell damage and the high caliber guns have also been changed. So uh, tanks with the Fosh 155 now have a 120 four-round autoloader like the uh, 50B or um, 5120. Um, the pin was also reduced. I, that I didn't quite understand, uh, just because the 120 it really shouldn't have its pin reduced. Uh, and actually, to be honest with you, I don't really mind this change with the Fosh, for example, because I think, you know, it should be a thing. I, it, the, in its current iteration right now, the Fosh is awful, and it could use anything to make it better. Um, the JPE, for example, no longer does 1,000 damage when it hits someone. I think it's on the higher scale of 850. Everything else does 750. Uh, so, so, wait, sorry, the big caliber guns, 183, 4005, and Yig uh, Pantry 100, all do 850, I think. I think. I'm just, that's, I mean, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head for one blast of my plate. Everything else should do 750. Um, another big change was the E3, which now has a 105. Uh, sorry, a, a 120. 120. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that either, but the damage was, was shifted around on a lot of guns, so I think the there's more of a separation now between the 120 and the 105. I want to say the 105s on the tier 10 mediums do 350, the 120s now do 400, like they always have, and the other tanks are 750, 155s are 750, and the bigger guns are 850. Which, I mean, you know, that's fine. I think that's okay. So, I mean, it's that's, this is the kind of rebalancing that I was thinking that might make a difference here. Um, there has been a lot of maneuverability changes to a lot of tanks, and this is probably what caught people off guard the most. It's like, for example, the, really, the only real tanks that weren't touched by this, the bat chat speed was lowered a little bit, but it's basically the same tank maneuverability-wise. E50M doesn't look like it was changed at all, but everything else basically goes 45 km. Um, that's low. That's pretty slow for the majority of things that have been all been going 65 or 70. Um, I'm not really sure how much I like this, but I mean, it's, it's a nice change. You know what I mean? It's something that you have to see to know whether or not these vehicles will be able to compete with other things. Um, excuse me. Wow. Um, I'm not too sure about that, though. You know, that's, I, I, I think it's, it's definitely 
something that should be spoken about, but I'm not sure that it's uh, what's needed. Um, RD rebalance. What they changed with artillery is they obviously lowered the damage, and they then gave it something that's like a debuff. I guess you like in MMO terms, it'd be a debuff, which basically means when you get hit by something uh, or a shell in general, uh, you are slowed down. You're, you're everything, everything on you is slowed down. It's almost like um, your crew was at a hundred percent, and now they're seventy-five. You know, so your reload goes up a little bit, um, your maneuverability is slower, your turret traverse is worse, everything that uh, your crew helps you with, basically, is much, 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 much lower. Um, but at least you aren't being slapped for a you know, thousand damage every single time you blink. Though I don't think it's necessarily fair to have a debuff in the game when you don't have a buff. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, you get an allied indicator, which means when you press T, you now get a circle over the area you're looking at, which I think is amazing. Um, it, it appears on the minimap. I don't think you see it in first person, but it does appear on the minimap, so you can see if you're, you're basically within that blast radius. That's nice. Um, I think that's a really, 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 really good idea. Uh, it also gives you whether or not the SPG is ready to fire or how many seconds he has until he does fire. Very, 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 very important information when you're playing artillery or on the ground. Uh, the artillery, the artillery aim. You guys remember the? I forget what it's actually called. The mod that basically you press G. Now it's J, and you press that, and you actually have it incorporated into the game, which allows you to have um, more of like a up top view, but it's like it actually follows the shell in. I don't like it, but you know it's something new, and if you actually like that kind of view, maybe it gives you better understanding of where your rounds are actually going to go or how much you can be off the ground or whatever but i mean if you like that view that's for you um these this is just overall what this has actually happened my impressions of this though i'm gonna switch back over to the first page we have here while displaying this on my stream i got quite a few things that people did and did not like um basically overall people slammed these things while i may or may not have agreed with some of these things this is what the people themselves were saying uh no one liked the view range nerfs because basically all tier 10 medium tanks were sitting around 320 view range um 340 350 i think was like the max i think any medium tank got uh heavy tanks were sitting around 3 3 340 350 360 ish tds i would think were about the same uh however light tanks were max so we're seeing we're talking like 430 view range, um, consumables and optics and everything else. They're pushing out to almost 540-ish view range, you know, with, with everything, 550 view range, obscene. Um, these guys are ripping dudes out of camo like it's nothing. Um, this is good though, because it gives light tanks an actual purpose. Now, I, and what I was thinking, I would think that maybe you'd wanna actually have the light tanks and the artillery have, you know, um, more of a, an actual like synergy going on here so if the arty gives people a debuff then maybe the light tank should then buff your team i mean it's something there needs to be a balance because you can't just debuff something without actually having a buff you know i mean i'm not sure how you'd implement that but considering they've actually put a debuff in the game it really shouldn't be that difficult to do something along the lines of buffing tanks um shell shock no one likes it <laughs> let's just Get that out of the way. Shell shock for what it's worth. No one likes it. This is this is the RDD buff. They think it's pretty silly. Most people think there's actually going to actually it's going to make camping worse because you're going to get hit and you're going to be down for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, five seconds, however long it is. It re basically sets your reload to some crazy high number. You can't move. You can't defend yourself. You can't angle nothing, and people don't like it. So uh, that's been the the, the Twitch wide consensus on that. Um, the aim time and accuracy for all tanks, some are really accurate now. For example, the JPE has like 0.24 accuracy. The the grill has like a point, no, it's a one second aim time, like 0.20 accuracy. We're talking like laser, you know, go forget it. Doesn't have to aim, doesn't have to do anything. Bam, you're hit kind of thing. Just look at you and you've been shot. Um, this obviously is all for testing purposes, but it's silly. <laughs> it's silly. Um, there's also really bad ones where the E5 now has 0.38 uh, accuracy and aim time of like two and a half seconds, which is abysmal. 
for a tank that is really good. Um, the Fox 5 was missing for me on the initial test, but now it's back, so we can leave that alone. Overall balance seems to be worse, and I mean, that's obviously just you know, the extremes of going up and down. People like it, people don't like it. Um, I Obviously, you can't really speak on it yet because we don't know what the heck balance even is in this current uh, in this current iteration of sandbox server. So I expect to see lots of changes, both positive and negative, as we continue on. So we'll see how that goes. Um, gun changes um, for basically how the accuracy works and stuff like that. People didn't like that, and they say it was possibly unneeded. I, you know, I'm I'm optimistic. I'll wait until that goes. Um, <clears throat> the rounds have a reduced pennant range. I don't even think it's going to be that much of a factor. Um, I really think that it won't affect too many people, um, though it may get annoying knowing that people like to snipe at obscene ranges and now all of a sudden they can't do it. I, you know, or the pin, they, they won't pin anymore. It's completely up to them. Positive things, though, the things that people actually want to see are changes, actually, not necessarily rebalancing of tanks. And this is what people were constantly throwing at me, and then we'll wrap this up, because I don't want it to be too long. Uh, more equipment. We've, we've been on the same equipment now for the better part of, well, I mean, since the game started. Um, we're basically, what, 2012, and we still have the same vents, rammer, optics for the same tanks. It's, you know, there's no choices there. It's, uh, it's sad, actually. It, it's the same thing. And people want, people want to actually have different choices between uh what they get i mean I, this i mean I, I completely agree with this but trying to explain it properly would be another video in itself so let's move on more crew skills that's just you know a, a thing you guys said you guys were going to do that and i think that that should actually happen um along the lines of what you guys are balancing these tanks with if you're going to have specific roles then give specific roles or you know the specific tanks like uh the heavy tanks give them like you know battle hardened or something like that as a as a crew skill that basically means that when they take shots, uh, their aim time gets faster or you know something like that you know something you give you know make it a perk if you want and make it be for all crew members like BIA is or something like that but make people change stuff up for different tanks and make it it matters uh, artillery for example maybe you can have something along the lines of uh, you know. I don't know, but to make it make it make them aim faster, make them actually you know shoot better. Just different skills. You, you guys know what I mean. Um, more consumables. You know, maybe things that do different things besides just make your tank spin faster and give you better crew stuff. Uh, why not one that? I, well, you guys are saying already that you wanted to take the. You were thinking about taking the repair kits and making them. Uh, you know, time sensitive, and they came back. They were renewable. Uh, I think it's a great idea because there's too many times where you fix your track and then are immediately ammo racked and your game is ruined. I think that if you set it to like a minute or something like that, you know, maybe someone could fix your ammo. You know, I, I, who knows? You know, stuff happens like that. Uh, people want bigger maps. I mean, you guys have addressed this many times and you go on from there. Um, I still think, and I read this uh, in a blog post of the day just from a meeting that you guys had, I still think you guys. And when I say you guys, I mean Wargaming in general. I think you guys are kind of dropping the ball on this whole artillery. Right now, you can see in the picture to the, uh, to the left of me, or to the right of me, whatever you're looking, uh, artillery only has one round now. They have HE, and HE itself is eh. You know, doesn't do much damage, doesn't do a whole lot of anything, really. I think, uh, I think that by basically giving artillery, maybe you have the HE round that does basically no damage, um, have that be a debuff. Make, you know, make it have this, this thing that you've come up with. Then maybe have another HE round instead of having one that has bigger blast radius. Give them another HE round that focuses on doing nothing but damaging the internal modules of your tank or the tank that you're hitting. So, say for example, if you miss the tank, you get nothing. But if you hit the tank, um, obviously RNG would roll, and depending on where you hit the tank, someone would take damage, uh, the gun would be broken, optics, uh, you get tracked, uh, maybe fuel tank, engine, you know ammo rack, anything like that, that's just designed specifically to damage things inside the tank. Um, you guys said also that you were interested in really having an illumination round or a smoke round. I, I could definitely see the smoke round stuff because that makes sense, but the illumination round and removing camo or lowering camo for TDs that are obviously supposed to be sitting in bushes, I think you're kind of missing a, 
a nice change to the game. I mean, the game at this point is kind of the same. If you know, after forty-five thousand battles like myself, I've played this game inside and out. I've seen everything you possibly see. RNG still baffles me though, but I mean, you know, every once in a while it's the same thing. And I would love to see a change in how artillery, light tanks, heavy tanks, medium tanks, TDs are played. I think that it would be a nice thing to bring into. I know how uh, when, it, when I had a chance to go uh, meet the CEO of Wargaming, it would be a really nice change, like he was saying, to make this game different. You know, to make it something that people actually look at and go, you know what? These tanks have these abilities to do stuff, and I like this, but let's take it one step further. Let's make them specialized. Specifically at doing what doing stuff that they with uh, what they do, and then you know as another bracket. So say for example, you have a two six eight that's obviously very accurate and very stealthy. You could then have another tank that's the same exact thing, but give give the the, the class itself different perks that make it better. I mean, I don't know. You know, kind of going off here. Um, already got that. Um, the thing. <laughs> The notes I have here, you know, are just very, they're very specific and trying to pick out things that make this video much l less long, <laughs> less, less, not, not as long, sorry, it's late, it's like one o'clock in the morning doing this video after my stream, but um, I'd love to see light tanks have a specific skill that allows them to actually see tanks better. Um, instead of giving, instead of forcing them to have better view range, I think there should be an actual skill that you give light tanks and light tanks only um, that allows them to basically either detect uh, through your headphones or headset or uh, speakers or anything like that, that that allows them to hear tanks. Maybe have them specifically go, hey, the tank is here. Let, let the light tanks basically be the only ones that are able to detect things like this and it makes light tanks special. Because right now they aren't. Even if you give them more view range, they're still really weak. Um, they inherently can't do a whole lot besides spot. And if you ruin the view range of everything else, people I think still will be less likely to move forward. Um, I think it kind of throws it backwards in the current iteration of Sandbox. But I mean, I'm just thinking that there's a different way to do this stuff. Um, people obviously want more customization because we've been we staring at the same tanks and the same camo for so long now that it's almost laughable that we haven't put more camo which really shouldn't take that long i know we saw in a video from wargaming probably about six months ago that had a new a new camo pattern for the it was on the tiger though it went away i've never seen it again it's gonna be camo uh for clan wars i mean but you know it's it's the fact that we can't just change the color of our tanks based on you know a certain color in general if you want a promo to be green if you want a tiger to be black maybe not but you know if you want you want a different color let people do it. You know, I think that should be a, a great idea. That's a different way to monetize what you guys currently have going, and it makes a little bit more money for you, you know, on that. Um, bigger maps, obviously that's been talked about before. Um, are these, are these, are these are the things we want to see before the rebalance itself. Bigger maps uh, have targeting, more depth, um, paint targets for artillery, light tanks. Um, so if, say for example, I guess you press T as a light tank, if the artillery actually hits said target, then uh, the the experience from basically sort of sharing experience, you both get full experience as if one of you shot it, uh, kind of thing. Maybe that maybe that helps a little bit. I don't know. Uh, residual spotting needs to go away. I completely agree with this. The residual spotting for what it is. I think in sandbox server, this is where you should test that. Residual spotting makes no sense, and it, it confuses the majority of players who think that once they drop behind cover, they cannot be seen. So you, I guess, I guess there's RNG based on residual spotting, and I'm not really sure what it is, so don't quote me on this. I know the spotting itself lasts for, you know, you get lit and then RNG runs a number, depending on you know, whatever it is, that your tank will stay lit behind cover, behind bushes for a certain amount of time. This is why certain things, when you light certain tanks, they'll stay lit for three seconds, other things will stay lit for 15 minutes. Um, it makes no sense, and I think newer players because they aren't really under the, they are being introduced to camo mechanics and things like that. This is one of the things I think you should remove in the sandbox server and see how people like it. Um, ask people specifically whether or not they like it or not. I think, I think this is probably one of the really big ones that needs to happen uh, in the sandbox server. And I'd like to see something like that happen. Um, no stacking already in a platoon. That was always something you guys addressed in the video. Um, and new map designs. And by, and by what I mean new map designs, I don't mean necessarily new map styles. 
I mean, um, you can you can bring the historical battles back. You can bring actual map terrain, but people kind of want to have uh, the old maps that were gimmicky brought back. And I know they're like, for example, the meta on Pearl River was insane. It was all over the place, but the map was beautiful. And people enjoyed it to a certain degree. And if people complained about it, it's because they didn't understand what they were supposed to do. Um, that's basically maybe what the, what Wargaming and A is currently doing with the, like the map walkthroughs nice that people know where they're supposed to go depending on their class instead of taking light tanks down uh the eight line on himmelsdorf and taking artillery to the top of the mountain himmelsdorf too this, this doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense and people shouldn't do it but they don't know any better sometimes because sometimes i think people in general just walk around uh shooting in normal mode td mode with artillery until like tier five or tier six they don't even know they can press the ship button. um so yeah that and um, that's basically all I got for these first two iterations of the test server. I think this is a great idea, Wargaming. Thank you very much for continuing to actually try and improve this game. Um, I, I really don't think that we're too far off from actually finding something that actually works for everyone and solving a ton of issues that people have with the game. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, because obviously this game has issues... Um, but we all still love it, and I think um, I think that this is the the first step to making sure that we all continue to love it for like the next ten years. Um, so yeah, uh, if you guys like this video, uh, you guys want me guys want me to keep doing more of these as we continue on with the sandbox server. I'm not, I'm not sure if you guys have access to it or not, or if anyone's writing information on it. I have no idea because uh, there's so many different places for this. Um, but if you guys like this kind of stuff, let me know in the comments below. Please like and share this video if you guys want more people to respond to it. Um, yeah, and make sure you guys follow me on Twitch because we'll hang out. Um, down there on the other side, basically, or this way, I guess, is my username. And you can just add me on Twitch that way if you like, or YouTube, either way. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you probably next week. Later.